Hi everyone, this is John Dickinson from Motionworks.net, back with a short Cinema 4D tutorial for you. I've been working on the hot rod model in my spare time, and last week I was working on the seat, and I received a few questions on how I approach this. So I thought I'd just record a quick tutorial to show you some of the techniques that I used. For this seat, I started with two cubes, one for the bottom and one for the top, and I've added various cuts. I've dropped it into subdivision surface. I've made that subdivision surface editable and then I've split sections off and I've added more cuts to add in this stitching detail. So the detail up here on the headrest, on the side here and this detail here. And the order in which you do this kind of thing is really important because when you split things off, if you start adding more cuts to adjacent objects and then you drop it into another subdivision surface, then things aren't going to line up. So obviously these aren't cubes. I've already added a few cuts in here and started to shape this. And this is what you call box modeling. Let me just come in here and I'll drop this into a subdivision surface. And what I generally do with this kind of thing is I'll leave the subdivision surface active and under display I'll choose isopalm mode. You can see I'm working in symmetry. So I come in here, just going to disregard the top for a sec. Come in here and I'll grab points and I'll shape while this is under subdivision. So I can start to see how this is going to look once it's subdivided. Let's take a look at number two. So here I've gone ahead and started adding a few more cuts. You can see I've added a cut all the way down here and I've pulled the edges in. This one just here. And I've grabbed this edge and further developed the shape. Let's just drop that into subdivision. So we're starting to get a shape that matches the reference image. I'll just show you that. These are the seats that I decided to use. And when you look at a reference image like this, you can see while we have you know, one piece for the seat here and one piece for the back, it's divided up into different sections. And obviously this is done through stitching. I saw this as having like two different levels of stitching. I saw that this down here was one level of stitching and this and this. So this was all one level. And same here, here, and down here. So you can see... I've started to just take this out of subdivision. I've started to put that stitch in place by pulling that edge in. And the plan was to, once those stitches were in place, to drop this into subdivision, then to make that subdivision editable, and then go in and add the next level of stitching, which is this one here, and down the side here, and here. And the reason I need to do that is because, especially down here, this is one object, but this stitching only goes up to this point. So you have to really think of this as being one object here and another object here. Remember, I'm working in symmetry. So the order in which you do this kind of thing is really important. And splitting off objects and then adding detail to adjacent pieces of geometry will allow you to add that detail but still have the pieces fit perfectly together. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's just take a look at what I mean. So what I might do first is I want to come in and add the cuts in. Just look at this again. I want to add these cuts in here, first of all. And I'll show you what I mean about that affecting adjacent geometry. So just got to check which ones I need to grab. So I think it's this one and this one. And remember that I only want to add the detail into this section here. I don't want to affect this section here. I'm going to grab my bevel tool in solid mode and just drag that out just like that. And you can see, obviously, I am affecting this section here. If I drop this into subdivision now, just turn that on. I've added extra loops into this section here. I'm not going to have a really nice, smooth curve there. So I need to remove the edges from here, but not yet. I'm going to do that after I've split the object off. 
So once again, just grabbing the object, I'm going to grab this edge here and this edge here and just move those down. Just like that. Preview that. Okay, so I've started to add those in. Obviously, this is looking way too loose here. It needs to be much tighter, but that'll all be fixed up later. But this is giving me pretty much the right shape. And I've got that stitching or those edges for the stitching in place. It's going to come out of isoperms into wireframe. You can see at the moment with my subdivision surface, I'm at a subdivision render of three. I'm going to use HB modeling's divider. Just hold down the alt key and I can decrease the subdivision. So now I'm at a subdivision of one. And this is going to be enough to hold that shape. So this is going to be enough to allow me to make this editable, but still hold that shape. I might just check if I need to add another cut just here, just to distinguish that a little bit more, just like that. Oh, that's looking good. So there we go. You can see we're generally getting things looking correct. And we're going to think about that stitching in a moment. Okay, so I'm just going to check my fong tag. It's only on 40. I'm going to make that 80. Just to smooth that out a bit better. And if we still have those cuts across there. We're going to fix that up in a moment. Okay, so now with that subdivision selected, I'm just going to delete the top one for now. We're just going to concentrate on the on the bottom here. So with that subdivision surface selected, I'm at a subdivision render of one. I'm going to right click on it and choose current state to object. That'll make that editable, but it'll keep my original. And what I generally do is I'll bring my original down and uh, I usually have a working null. Just turn that off just in case I need to go back, which I often have to. Okay, so there we go. So we've made that into an editable object now. At this level, it keeps the shape that we need, but it's still fairly flexible. Big mistake when you're beginning modeling is to add too much detail too early. And then when you go in and add cuts and you start moving polygons around, you introduce lumps and bumps. Okay, so now what I need to do is split this side section off. First of all, I'm going to drop this again into symmetry. Now I'm going to use HB symmetry. That just allows me with that selected to do that in one click. You can see that's deleted half and it's dropped it into a symmetry object. Okay, so UL for loop mode. I'm going to press 3 to select my polygons. I've set my shortcuts for 1 for points, 2 for edges, and 3 for polygons, which is a, a major time saver. So I want to select this loop here. And I'm going to press UF to fill that. Then I'm going to press UP to split that off. UP. Then I'm going to use HB delete to delete the original and the points at the same time. Just saves me a couple of clicks. Okay, so now what I can do is drop this into a subdivision surface. Let's take a look. All right, so it doesn't look that different. It's nice and smooth. Everything's still fitting together really nicely. But we do have two separate objects. Now you can start to see the problem with these edges here. They're really starting to add a bump in there. So what I have to do now is come in and select that guy. And I need to dissolve these. These are the ones we introduced before. Just like that. Right click, dissolve. You can probably get rid of this one too. And this one and this one. Actually, probably, sorry. Yeah, that's right. So dissolve. And we're not messing anything up. It's still fitting nice and snugly in here. But now we've gotten rid of that issue. So you can do what I did and add the loops that cut across things that are going to be separate objects, knowing that 
later on you're going to be able to come back and remove those. If I'd have just added my cuts to this point and not propagated them into this object, what I would have done is added an end gone here and then when I went ahead and tried to select this loop, it wouldn't have selected the loop properly. And when I collapsed this, or when I made this editable, this subdivision surface, I would have added some really weird geometry in here. But by just putting those loops all the way across, I kept this in quads and I had good edge loops and then I could go ahead afterwards and dissolve those. So the order in which you do things is really important. And as you get better at modeling, you'll start to be able to look ahead and understand what you need to do up front so that things are easier later in the modeling process. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Looking good. So now what I need to do is add the stitching across the side here. So I need this stitching in here. So let's take a look at what we might need to do there. If we have a look at the model, you can see we have this diamond polygon here and we don't really have it straight. Now I could move this up just by sliding it. But you can see that's changing things, see? We've already collapsed that down and that's no longer going to fit. And this is what's the problem I mentioned before. We may have to go back and repeat a couple of steps. If I add a cut in here, you can see once again it's changing it and it's no longer fitting. So we do, we do have to go back. So I'm going to just delete this one. And this is why you keep a working version because it's very easy to forget steps. Let's turn that off. Okay, this is still connected. So once again, what we have to do before we make this editable is add in that loop. So what that says is it's really important to study your reference image first before you go too far with your model. But keep a backup just in case. Okay, so I need to add something around here. And that's changing the roundness of here and of here as well. But you can see everything's going to work out when we make this editable because we're adding that loop when these two different parts of the chair are still connected. So I'm just going to double click that T for scale and I'm just going to scale that down on the Y to zero and that's got a nice well, pretty straight line there pretty straight loop. It is quite tight on here but I can actually loosen that up a little bit later. I might be able to just grab that point here and just move that down a bit which is quite good because it actually puts a little bit of a dip in the chair here. So once again Get rid of that and that just keep things tidy. Still with a subdivision renderer of one, right click, current state to object, just like that. Put this one into working and delete the other one. Okay, so now we have that cut. Just wondering whether it's high enough. I might just want to bring it a little bit higher. MO for slide. Just bring that up. Okay, so now once again UL polygon mode. Select that loop. UF shift and fill that selection. UP delete. That's going to delete the original. Now I have two separate objects. Okay, so now I can come to this piece and once again dissolve the ones I don't need, dissolve the loops I don't need. Very careful to dissolve the correct ones. Dissolve. Let's see, probably that one too. It still looks fine. Okay, that's good. Now I forgot to put that into symmetry, so just thinking of how I can do that quickly. Uh, let's see. For now what I'll do is I'll just delete this one like that 
And what I can do is just drop that into symmetry like that. And I've got to put both of these in here and just group them. There we go. So I could have done that earlier, but no harm done. Okay, so I've removed those edges. Now I want to go in and add that stitch along here. Let's just drop this into a subdivision surface. Okay, looking good. So we need that stitch around the side here. And because these are two separate objects, I'm no longer going to add the cut into this section here. Okay, so once again, bevel in solid mode. Don't want the stitch to be too, too wide. Something like that. Now, I need to push this edge in a little bit in order to make the stitch. And obviously, if I go and grab the move tool and move that across, that's going to mess things up over here. If I grab the scale tool and scale it in, it's not going to be even. The best way to do this is to dissolve this edge. This is the way I like to do it. Polygon mode, loop, select that, MW for inner extrude, inner extrude that slightly. And once again, it's the same issue. If I tried to use the move tool, I'm going to move polygons correctly in some areas, but move them incorrectly in others. So what I want to do is use normal move. So MZ, and that's going to move that in on the normal of each polygon. So that's to be nice and even. Bring that quite far in. You can see it's even all the way around. Let's take a look at that. So you can see we've added the stitch to this section here, but we've still got these lining up nicely. I've introduced a new polygon just in there, which I need to remove. Just delete that. And there we go. Now that stitch is probably a little bit wide. So I could go in UL, grab that one there, not that one there. Now it's looping around because I've introduced a polygon at the back here. I need to remove this one as well. Delete. Sometimes when you're adding this kind of stuff, I'll do the uh, extrude or I'll do the bevel and I'll test it. I'll put it on a subdivision and I realize it's too much. And I'll go in, I'll just undo a few steps and I'll do it again. In this case, what I can do is once again, MZ for normal move and just move these ones up on the normals as well. Let's see how that looks. Should make it slightly finer. Yeah, that's better. So you can see from that example, the order in which you do things when you're modeling is extremely important. If you go ahead now and add any more cuts to either side of this, then these things aren't going to line up. It wasn't so important on the top here, but it'll be particularly important on the side or on the front. Let me show you what I mean. So if I want to round this out a bit, for example, I can bring that down. I probably want to look at it under subdivision. As I bring this down, it's still sitting pretty nicely. I'm going to bring that back a bit. But you can see as I bring that one back, I'm starting to introduce a gap. Now, one thing we could do, and one thing we probably should do, is add another loop on the sides because we can see a little gap in there. So I'll select those edges. Just solo that using HB solo. Got those selected, yeah. Grab my extrude tool. 
and just extrude that. I'm going to hold the shift key down just to change the angle of that on the fly. Just bring that in. Unsolo that. That's better. And we can do it on the other side as well. So just grab the other side. Solo, HP Solo is so good. I use it all the time. Double click. This is not going to be quite as pretty on this one. Extrude. Not too bad. Still pretty good. Let's just see how that looks next to the other one. We could probably bring this one up a bit too. If I scale it out a bit, yeah, it's probably going to add a bump in there. Either way. Not quite liking that. That's better. Adjusting these edges is fine because it's not going to affect how this sits up against this one. Okay, that's looking better. Much better. So that's how I approach the bottom of the seat. For the top, I pretty much did exactly the same thing. So I added the cuts in here, dissolved them in here, and I had to split this headrest section off as well. So I ended up with three parts. One, one for the headrest, one for this section here, and one for this. And then I went in and added my loops after I subdivided it and added that extra stitching. So what you really need to do is think about your model before you start. Think about the order in which you need to do things and whether or not it's important to add detail like this. I could have done this using normals, but I decided that I wanted to add this in the geometry. And you can see if I just zoom in on this image, there are some stitches either side of the join where the leather joins. So I thought it made sense to actually add this cut in the geometry. And what I can do if I want to, I'll be using Substance Painter, is to add the stitching as a texture using a normal map. And obviously, you know, this is leather and it's got a few bumps and um, creases in it. And that can all be done using normals. I didn't add this section of the chair because for my model, the car doors are always going to be closed. So you're never going to see that. So I hope that's been helpful. For now, this is John from Motionworks. Have fun, be creative, and I'll see you in another tutorial.